Great. Hello, I'm Heather Kretschmer, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about auditory affect. Um, this tool or this activity uses the um, radio garden tool. That's one tool you can use, but there are other digital tools you can also use. And what I'm going to have us do is um, parts one and two will take about 15 minutes. Part three will be will vary depend on, depending on our conversation. Um, but basically, we'll start off with going to Radio Garden. This is a nice tool where you can go around the, the world and listen to different radio stations in different countries. It's really fun and intuitive tool. Um, and we'll explore until we find a station that interests us, listen to the station, focusing on what we are listening to, and thinking too about how it makes us feel. And then part two, we'll take two minutes to either write down what we feel or draw what we feel. And what you can also do is you can also type it into a device or draw on a device. It doesn't have to be pen and paper. And then we'll spend five minutes discussing the experience. And here I'd like to emphasize that we're only gonna share what we wish. You don't have to share your feelings if you don't want to. We can talk about other aspects of the experience or talk about other things about listening to the radio, or thinking about exploring different parts of the world. Yeah, and that's basically the task idea. Okay, so we spent about eight minutes exploring the radio garden. Everybody did that individually and spent two minutes then writing down and drawing how we felt. And so now we're gonna talk about um, we're going to discuss the experience and only share what we want to share for the next five minutes or so. So go ahead. The floor is open to all of you. Hi. Um, so first of all, you know, I'm just going to show it without sharing my my um, my audio, so that shouldn't cause a problem, right? So basically, I think at the beginning it landed me just in Cairo. Um, and then you can move around to different parts of the world. I mean, this was not Cairo at this point because I moved around a lot. But you move around and as soon as you hit a place where there's a radio station, it starts playing it for you and tells you where it is um, and so on. And so first of all, I was curious. I, I think the main thing I was feeling was curious most of the time. And I also started to notice that there are sparse areas where there aren't a lot of radio stations. And I'm not sure if it's like, there's no radio there or if it's just that they don't have internet radio or something um but yeah so i was feeling curious i felt a little bit like when i was younger and i would go to a new country as a tourist and i just jump on and off and go to places where i don't know where i'm going or where i'm going to end up and my geography is not that good so i did end up in countries that i didn't know that country was there i didn't know that country was an island um i also felt a little bit nostalgic so um at some point um, I, I went close to the India station and growing up, I heard a lot of Indian music. I went to the Philippines and I grew up listening to a lot of Filipino music because I grew up in Kuwait. So there was a lot of Indian Filipino people. I went back to Kuwait and listened to music there. The one I fell in love with was a station in Mongolia, which is a country I've never known anyone from there. I've never even thought about visiting there. It's in our history books, not in a good way in this part of the world. Um, but the music and the song that I came upon was so beautiful. And then I had this feeling of this, when you miss something as soon as it's over, because I don't know who sang it and how, how do I ever listen to this again? Like you can go back to the station, but you might not get that particular song that you liked. Um, and so that, that feeling, I, I was emotional about the song and then I was upset that I didn't find it. But I discovered, that, first of all, you can make a favorite. So I favorited that station so I can go back again. And you can actually go to the website of that station and some stations on their website will tell you who's singing. And so you'd be able to go back to it and find it on Spotify or YouTube or something. Yeah, I noticed that too when I was uh, fiddling with it a couple of weeks ago, that that's also a nice feature. I, I heard a song, I was like, oh, I really like this song. So I went to the station and it showed what they were playing and I was able to find it on YouTube. So that is a nice feature of the Radio Garden. Yeah, okay, other thoughts? Oh, um, okay. Cool. 
Yeah, sir, go ahead. <laughs> Irene, go ahead. I'll go after you. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, I, I think priority should be with the people who have a bit of manners, like lifting their hands, not me who just comes <laughs> in. So that's why I muted, but thank you, yes, sir. Um, you know, this, this, is, this is fine. You really should yeah. be first. Okay, thank you. I, uh, you know, when, when, when um, Maha was speaking, I could feel the energy that she had because that's, I think, the same way I felt. Um, I felt like a little girl again because I love music. So listening to music from different places and, and, and that kind of thing. I also felt like I was traveling because one of the things when you travel is you listen to the radios in that area. So I felt... I felt like I was traveling again. And um, I love dancing. For me, music, I dance to any music, bring it on and I'll dance to it. So uh, for the sessions that I went and found music, I felt like standing and dancing. So that, that's really cool. And um, I didn't go to Mongolia, but I've met someone from Mongolia, but thanks, I'm going to check out their music now. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I'm happy. Thank you. <laughs> Over to you, Yasa. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm quite familiar with the radio in Egypt here. So I browsed, actually, I went back. I'm familiar with the Egyptian and, and the, the well-known, the UK BBC, the BBC radio, and, and in the US also the CNN radio and, and, and such. So I went back to the uh, most awkward places that we, we don't have. We, we often don't, don't have access to, or we don't uh, give it the highlights of our, of our attention. Um, I, I found myself browsing the Germany, despite the fact that I don't know German. Uh, I, I have learned basics of German, but I don't know German really. And uh, I found out that even small cities do have a radio station. Like, um, it's not about here in Egypt that uh, we have only general radio stations about uh, each and every field, like sports, like there is the, the, uh, the, the Egyptian public, the governmental radio, the public one, and there are some private stations. But I found out in, in Germany or, or some way they have the idea of having a radio for each town, for each city, that um, I'm, I'm really curious to know um, how uh, does different, how it, like does different uh, um, those variations? How do these variations uh, um, make up for each city? You know, like what is being added in each one of them, um, um, and they might be really close to each other, but how they are really um, entangled in some way for their programs? How they are really um, their, their their variety in songs, their variety in programs. And then I, I navigated to Doha, Qatar. So to see how also they are, I, I was curious to know how they are really navigating the idea of radio. Are they like here in Egypt where they talk about uh, social um, uh, topics, where they talk about uh, um, news, where they talk about what happens in the day or are they a bit of music radio? And, um, and, and, and I stayed a little bit there, so that time, time went up really. I didn't uh, navigate a, a lot. Okay, nice. Aliyah, were you going to say something? Yes, I was going to say that I loved it. And uh, I mean, I already incorporate music as much as possible, especially as a form of meditation in my previous classes especially when I was a primary school teacher and the kids love it a lot. And sometimes I'm in the middle of a lesson, I would basically dance with them a bit and then we continue doing our work again. Um, so I love music and I visited several places like Maha, I landed on Cairo, Egypt as soon as I opened it. So I listened to some of that first. And then I went on to search for uh, Spain because I love Spanish music and uh, Germany because I was curious, I never, I don't remember listening to German music before, but I was curious how it was like. But unfortunately, I couldn't really find songs there. It was mainly news or people talking. Um, but I didn't find much music. Maybe I didn't search well enough. And then I went on to uh, Syria because I love Syrian music as well. 
So I went to, and that's when I started, you know, going nuts on the desk. <laughs> I was dancing on my own and visiting the chat to see, you know, just to keep track of what I go back and talk with each other. So that was really, really enjoyable. And I sent it already to the people I know who love listening to music. So thanks, Heather. No problem. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I can really identify with the dancing. <laughs> That's kind of how I felt too. I was like, oh, I like dancing around my apartment. All right. Any more thoughts, Mia? Yeah, I just want to say I loved if, if it you too. Want. Loved it so much. I felt like um, I was flying through the sky, and it was a constellation of um, small visits that I could drop down. And it reminded me actually of a game that I used to play with my children when they were little on Christmas Eve. They had something called the Santa Tracker, and it would be basically like a GPS that showed. Um, where Santa was at different times in the, the, the evening before uh, Christmas Day. And it was a really wonderful way for the children to, to be curious about parts of the world. And so I felt like it was almost like my traveler soul in a bit of the like childlike re reminiscence of that game we used to play when they were a child. Um, and I also really like the name Radio Garden because it's just about like this sort of flourish of beautiful growth, um, you know, beautiful, um, you know, popping up of uh, interesting, you know, natural things on the ground, whatever they may be. I also want to say that I noticed when I visited a variety of different places, of course, I started off at my locale, which kind of surprised me because uh, I'm usually right outside New York City, but it said Charleston and it reminded me I was at my parents' place. So it's funny how you just live in your life, but you forget that you're uh, in a different part of the map of the world when you're in a different place sometimes. So that was sort of like a little bit jarring and the radio station there had the weather report, like the National Weather Service. So that was interesting because I assume you could probably find that in other places like the local weather. But um, I hopped from um, Cape Verde to Barbados to um, uh, a place out. I noticed that I was drawn to islands for some reason. I think it was just the far awayness of them yes. that made me want to go there. Um, but I also visited places like Norway because I lived there and I just wanted to hear what it what was going on in my old haunting ground over there, you know. So I felt very nostalgic. Um, I also felt like the sounds I heard were very pop centric and English centric, um, even American centric or, you know, like kind of pop culture or mainstream pop kind of um, sounds, which surprised me there too. And I thought about um, that kind of culture centric, you know, um, uh, imperialistic kind of quality to music in the world as well. So, um, yeah, I, I felt like it was unharmful eavesdropping, you know, like it was kind of like listen in and be a little bit of like, it's a little secret, you know, that you're listening to, but it wasn't harmful eavesdropping. So anyway, that's my feelings about all of it. Mostly I just loved it. And one last thing I wanna say is just that it reminds me of another game that my children now play, which we have to do another um, video on. Maybe we can even involve them in sharing it out, but it's a game that they play regularly called Geolocator, where it goes through the GPS and it just drops you down in on a street view of the world. And the game is who can guess where we are first without being able to, and I, I think it's um, actually done that way, like meaning there's no actual, I don't know how it, it's done exactly because I haven't played it, but I hear them playing it all the time. And they try to figure out just from the like, the flora, fauna, like street life, uh, whatever it is of the world, they try to figure out where it is. Sometimes it's really quick. Sometimes it's really hard, but it's really fascinating. Oh, nice. 
All right. So Heather, yes. I can we? I, I'm curious how you use this in your own teaching. Like when <laughs> I, I teach a course with intercultural learning as part of the theme, so it kind of makes sense to, to just do that. I mean, I was thinking it would be nice for students to do it on their own time at home, like spend a half hour doing this or more if you like, and then report back. But also it would be interesting as people walk in, the first person who comes chooses the location. And we listen to that and we talk about what were our expectations or what do you think this place is and what can you tell about the music? And I was also thinking about very young kids when they're learning about a country, a lot of times they do research and they get pictures. I don't think they ever go and listen to their radio station. It's such a cool concept. But interestingly, right. almost all the radio stations I came across for the most part were playing music and not like weather reports and things like that. So at first I thought they don't have any of these until I found some Arabic ones that were people talking. Yeah, I think there's like a, it depends on whatever the radio station is playing or doing at the time. And it depends on what you, what you end up landing on. Yes, um, to be very honest, I have never done this with a class. I wanted to try it out with you first. <laughs> um, one way that I thought about doing it with in foreign language, which obviously isn't gonna apply to maybe any of you, I don't know, um, is, you know, you can simply have the students, let's say teaching Spanish, you can have them go to countries where Spanish is spoken and have them listen to radio stations there, just explore and listen to radio stations there. Or for example, I thought, um, you know, I, if, please correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, there are many different varieties of Arabic, right? And you could send students to, you know, if you're teaching an intermediate Arabic, course, you can send students to different Arabic countries to listen to the different varieties, right? Um, so I think that, and yes, exactly, I'm reading in the chat, even some people uh, learn language better than through songs. Go ahead. Even yes, in please. Arabic yes, stations, sir. there are also English, state, yeah, in Arabic countries, there are English speaking stations. So it would be very nice for them also to listen to something in their own language, but with another point of view from from a point of view of a, of someone, you know, um, um, in the U.S. also there is I can't remember its name really, but there is an, a, a a station that talks in the Egyptian Arabic, twenty four seven, and and here in Egypt we have two stations talking English twenty four seven. So it's really nice also to uh, have an interchanging. Um, um, uh, cultural background about how each country uh, sees the world and so on and so forth, regardless of languages. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, and to kind of wrap this up, because I think we need to move on. This isn't the only tool that you could use for this. Let me share my screen briefly. Um, there are two further, I'm sure there are more tools than what I have here, what I found. But two other tools that might be of interest are, for example, this one here, um, Earth. I think it's FM, I can't see. Yeah, and this one, you can listen to nature sounds. It's the same principle. You can go all over the world and there are these little hearts and you can click on a heart and listen to the nature sounds. And that's a really nice one too. Um, or for example, over here, Unified uh, Cosmos, there's like a, a wheel and you can click on the wheel and it says, listen to the most relaxing sounds in the world. Um, the ones I listened to, I didn't find particularly relaxing, but I guess it's a matter of taste. All right, so those are two more tools and I'll stick those in the chat. And I think that's it for the recording. Thank you so much, Heather. I'm so excited to try these with my child and in my class. And thank you all for, for participating. Thank you.